Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Nocturnal Podcast. Uh, There's a special episode of uh, the Rare Beings, right? Uh, People who do extraordinary things and who are not just, you know, I, I don't I don't I don't take you as just another person in life because also I I, I, I I've, and I've said this probably I've probably said this to you back when I was still on Facebook that I love the like you you'd have these long train of thoughts and you'd always write them down you do it on WhatsApp too and then you'd have like twenty slides and it's just like man how does this guy's mind work like you're not just an average human being right like you I consider you an endling where. If what the hell is an endling? <laughs> 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 so, like an endling is a rare species where, if uh, you were to die, like there could be no more. Like you, it's it's like it's like a a really brilliant stallion that needs to keep on breeding so that the genes are passed on for 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 quite some time and. Should it die before it does that, then there'll be there'll never be yeah. another or close to that. How about a big family dog? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we are right. The world is all right. <laughs> the world is all right. Thanks for the kind words. I don't know. Uh, it's an interesting thing, like to start any conversation like that, man. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the big ups. I believe opposite, and I always get shut on for believing opposite. I don't believe in the specialness of individuals. Mm-hmm. Um. Sure, I have to qualify that and say that yes. correctly. Yeah. Um, I think we're all unique, right? And I think we're all given circumstances by God that create a person who specializes in X, Y, Z, right? But as soon as we start thinking that a contribution by Leander Jaffa is more important than a contribution by Sanji, I think then we're lost. Mm-hmm. That's my perspective, mm-hmm. right? Like, yeah, you might like. I feel like at some point you're gonna become a humanitarian and just quit business altogether. And just Me, I'm, I'm, never. I'm, I like money. <laughs> never. I'm a philanthropist. I'm giving away my billions to everyone. Might do that, but I like money. I like. I no. All no. of it. I like. I'm using the word like very specifically. I'm sure you've seen. I'm very specific with the words I choose. I've never yes. said I love money. Yeah. Uh, I like money. I like. I like having means to do things. Yes, yeah. Um, I like that excess, right? Mm-hmm. I wish we lived in a world where money didn't, doesn't exist at all. Uh, but become a philanthropist, man. Um, you see, the thing is, I fell out of love with these socialist types. Then they all talk, you know? Yeah. They, they're well, bullshitters. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. So even in our business, we're very much socialist, right? right? In its intent. I didn't build this business to make a profit. I just happened to be good at maths and finance. So yeah. it was like, let's do this, the people's fund, right? Yeah. Like so change the landscape of the black people. Yeah. But now nah, I'm not leading business. I like business. <laughs> I like I like business. I like I like fighting where the devil exists. Yeah. <laughs> you like difficulty. I like difficulty. I like challenge. <laughs> call me um, a philanthropist. I, I, I had to call myself out probably a week ago. Like I was not even a week ago, Monday. So, like Monday, I had such a tough day, and I was just like, I just want to quit everything and just and just be a bum. I just want, I just want to leave everything. You're being a bitch today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then I was like, but it's them. It's in my nature to genuinely just run towards difficulty. Like I, I want, I want to run towards that so that I can Does feel you accomplished. I think so. You give you meaning. Yes. Careful with that. Mm-hmm. Be very careful with that. Um, because then you've got the risk of throwing grenades into your own life so that you can continue to have purpose in you. So I like difficulty as work, not as my identifying central thing. Mm. You know? I, why I'm asking you this is because I come from there where pain was... Pain was... was the driving force. Was the purpose. Yeah. You know? Um, but I say be careful of that is that you might lose sight of what all in front of you, you know? Like, have you ever struggled through happy moments? Like, yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, be careful of this. <laughs> so, because uh, another, another, like, I'll, 
because I, I, I do have, you know, I, 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 I look out for certain things that I feel could be flaws in me. Mm-hmm. And I try to work around that. Like, because I was just, to myself, it's like, and it's one of the things I'd say to someone else, that I, I, it's, it's a gift and a curse. I, I don't know when to give up. So even in the most difficult of situations, I need to fix it so that it goes how I think it should. Got you. Man, I, I haven't stopped struggling with that. I still struggle with that. Mm-hmm. I still struggle with that deeply. Mm-hmm. Um, um, you would have seen on my WhatsApp status is like I've had a very interesting journey with God for the past yes. 12 months. Yes. Um, yes. And even how you described me at the beginning of the podcast is typical of how I grew up. I, could, I thought I could do everything, mm-hmm. right? And then in learning, learning the relationship with God and His role in my life, right? Sure, knowing when to let go, control, and carry on, right? Mm-hmm. It's very hard, right? I have to pray about everything now. <laughs> oh, yeah, God, can I just carry on just a bit? <laughs> just attend it. <laughs> just to see what happens. <laughs> Let's see how far we can go. Let's see how far we can go with this. <laughs> and then also, on the other extreme, I do the worst. Sorry, there's a kid in the room, and I'm sorry like crazy. Oh, ah, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, one of the things is also the reverse is where I sit too much in spirit and don't do action okay. things in like this life. Yeah, yeah. And one of the problems with that is that man, kingdom is not manifest in your head and in your in your heart. Yeah. Like, it's manifest in, <laughs> in real life. Yeah. In real life, right? Like you need to glorify in, in your acts, Actually. your fruits, and you should see it. You know. So I'm in agreement with you that that you don't know where to stop and when when it's too far, mm-hmm. right? I will say what has helped me is like praying about. It. I don't know where you are on the on the spiritual side of things. So, it's it's that thing of. I struggle with 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 uh, praying about it because it's just like I feel like I need to constantly be, in control of, what is happening. Like in the midst of chaos, and there's a storm. I want to stop the storm. Like I want to I want to play God and let it stop raining and let let the rainbows come out and let the sun shine. And, and, and let, let everyone just, or this situation be done for now. And let, let's move to, got to, to greener pastures. Got you. What do you believe in? Uh, Religion-wise. So I grew up a Christian. And it's a cultural affirmation. What do you <laughs> so I, I genuinely believe there is a high power. I believe in God. I do believe in God and yeah. God guiding. And I also believe that my ancestors do watch over me. Got you. Yeah. Got you. So... One of the most interesting things um, I've learned for the past 12 months, so I grew up, my parents were liberation fighters, so mm-hmm. they were agnostic like crazy, right? Mm-hmm. So I had space to figure out this life thing, mm-hmm. yeah? And uh, schools taught us Christianity until I was Christian from until I was 12. Okay, Jesus. And then from 12 to about 27, 28, I was atheist, right? Mm-hmm. Like deeply atheist. Yeah. So that, that that's another thing that, that I wanted to ask you about because I've I've, I've known you for quite some time. So I have watching your journey of transition from one point to the next. I was just like, I need to know what then you know pushed that transition. Ah, oh, psychedelics first and foremost. Uh, yeah. Getting high in psychedelics <laughs> will show you that we're not the only ones out here. Uh, <laughs> uh, second to that, man, it's just deeply deep unhappiness. Like. Yeah. Like, there's a point where the pain is not the answer anymore, right? Um, it can't be the meaning and the purpose. Mm-hmm. And you're searching for something. When I was running, like, running a 150 million rand company, I was deeply unhappy. Mm-hmm. Like, deeply unhappy. You wouldn't see it on the surface because I can put on a brave face, but yeah. I was deeply, deeply. I'm even getting teary thinking about this now. I think it's. I think it's the things you're dealing with. Yeah. I just want to put it out there. <laughs> um, and then from 28, so let me, let me say from 28, I started becoming from atheist to agnostic. Mm-hmm. I specifically believed in Jesus Christ for 12 months. It's only been 12 months. Mm-hmm. Um, because I was in his power, um, like physically in the first, which we can discuss uh, yeah. in, in, another, in another moment. Yeah. Um, but one of the most interesting things I've learned in those 12 months is that, uh, yes, the Bible has nice stories, but like, man, it's, a, it's a spiritual constitution. And it actually has 
every religion has the same precepts mm -hmm. and concepts. Mm -hmm. Like even our Kuli Michael's view, it's the same concept. Uh -huh. of fasting, yeah. tithing. Yeah. We're all spiritual spirits, what they require is blood, yes. right? Um, and how they get that blood, they need a body. That's the law that God sets, right? Mm -hmm. Is that listen, there's nobody who enters a body without loopholes and various other things, right? Mm -hmm. And those spirits then work in the body using because they're looking for blood and flesh, right? Mm -hmm. It's high level, I'm high level in this, yeah. right? As much as possible. Yeah. No one should listen to us going, what the hell is this? <laughs> Talk about heaven, guys. <laughs> um, and even historically, if you look at like the Old Testament, right? Mm. The constitution was still the same. The wages for sin is death, right? Mm. It's always been the same. And what the death means is a sacrifice of blood, right? Mm. And what Jesus comes and does, he goes, nah, I'll be the blood. Mm -hmm. Drink me as wine, as yeah. blood, right? Like as wine, yeah. as representation of my blood. Mm -hmm. Now you've cleansed yourself of that sin. Mm -hmm. Now you can go ask from your father in a holy way, right? Mm -hmm. Like So if you look at Moses when he set up the Deuteronomy, all of the laws, mm -hmm. it's the same sort of thing. And what I found, and why I'm bringing this, this whole preamble and asking what you believe in, is that there's things you clearly know you're not in control of, right? Yeah. Like you use the nice metaphor of the storm, mm -hmm. right? There's this book that came to me, 21st of October, 2021. We're two weeks away from that day, actually, mm -hmm. um, for the year. I was sitting with my friend, going, man, I need to go figure out what's going on spiritually because I am Yassin, man. Mm -hmm. Then he said, you know, I'm not sure, I remember, he said, you know, he was talking about something else. I don't even care what he was talking about. But when those words hit me, it was like, there was a voice behind me, right, talking. Mm -hmm. Now listen, I've not read the Bible before this, yeah. right? This before this moment, I've not... I conceptually know it, yeah. right? <clears throat> but Job 38 came through my, you know, like, you know, when they're reading a scroll? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was running through the back of my head. I'm like, I know this from somewhere, but I don't know where. And it's like, basically, when he said, you know, opened my mouth, I breathed in. It felt like, they call it the Ruach in Hebrew, but like, it's like the breath of God came inside of me. And all I heard was, who is this who muddies my, who muddies my plans without knowledge, right? Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Where were you when I... Yo, and he starts... Yeah, step back, look, 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 look. He starts stunting, man. He's basically describing who who who, who tells the light where, 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 where it starts and ends. Who tells the darkness where it ends. And who tells the water of the waters of the sea this far and no yeah. more. Who tells the moon to pull the tides. Who tells, who tells, who tells the animals to hunt this animal? Like, and it's like, when you listen to that, you go... Man, you're tending to a lot, yo. <laughs> <laughs> and what he's, what he's, what what it means to me at least in saying this, probably my most important book is like context. Job was angry; he's a good servant of God, right? God and the devil make a deal. Weird. Uh, <laughs> I want to say something, but I don't know if I'm gonna get in trouble for it. But they make a deal, and uh, the devil. <laughs> the devil basically says, yeah, I'm going to get in trouble, I'm going to say that, I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> Our pastor sees this, I'm getting in serious trouble. Uh, the devil says, this guy only follows you because you've given him so much blessings. Devil, uh, God says, nah, this guy is faithful, his heart is faithful, regardless. Mm. So then the devil says, I bet, let's test that, right? They test that. Yo, hey, bah, 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 my business. Go for your kid. <laughs> like, your kid, this man was rich. His wife even left him. And just before Job 38, he's sitting with his friends getting counsel. Mm. And his friends are telling him about all of these laws, right? And they're basically talking shit, mm. right? About why is he suffering so much, right? Mm. And they're basically going, yeah, it's because you've done a sin. It's like, but I've not done a sin. Mm. It's like, no, maybe you haven't inspected a sin. So Job 38 is God, like, coming down from the heavens and going, I'm going to answer these questions myself. Mm. I'm going to answer these questions myself. What I'm basically going to tell you is you have no idea the plans and the things I have to take care of, right? So when things go good and bad, right, know that it's part of a plan that's bigger than what you can conceive because you don't have the faculty of mind to it's hold the moon mm -hmm. in place, to hold the seas in place, to count the clouds as they number, right? Like, I couldn't even start counting clouds, <laughs> just like this, right? Snowflakes. <laughs> there's, this, there's, this, there's this sarcastic part, he goes, um, something like... Uh, I describe one of these concepts, man. 
And it's something like where the darkness uh, resides and where the light abodes, man. Then he says, tell me, because you have lived so long. Like, and you stop and you go, I haven't. You know I haven't. Like, why are you being this guy, right? And it's funny. The thing I was going to say is, that's going to get me in a lot of trouble. It's going to get me into a lot of trouble. But you know what? I've never been averse to trouble. Um, ah, Father God, forgive me if this is blasphemy. <laughs> I've been playing with this concept, right? Mm -hmm. Have you ever watched, like, imagine a couple is together, man. Mm -hmm. They break up, yeah? When they are young, those kids, right? The thing they acclimatize to very nicely is their mother, yeah? And mother runs narratives about the dad, just generally speaking, mm -hmm. right? And the dad from a distance goes, man, I love you. I need you to be with your mother and be good with your mother. So I'm not going to count, I'm not going to talk about your mother at all. Mm -hmm. But you're going to have a perspective of me that's wrong. Mm -hmm. Right? Cool. Then as you grow older, as a, especially as boys, right? When you reach about 20-something to 30, mm -hmm. start talking to your dad. Mm -hmm. And then he goes, man, all of that shit was bullshit. <laughs> Come up your side. <laughs> right? It's just, I, I, it wasn't a place for you guys to know about that. Mm -hmm. Right? It was between me and her. Mm -hmm. I loved you. I had tough love for you. Mm -hmm. I did not want to weaponize you to get back at your mother. Mm -hmm. But very often, uh, my mama weaponized their children to get back at their exes. Mm -hmm. Right? And when you watch that relationship, right? It's very akin to why why is God not killing Satan? You know, like, it's almost like man, neda, <laughs> yes. Maybe Satan is not male. You know, like, I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> the kids are suffering because Satan currently has custody. <laughs> if I get in trouble for this comment, <laughs> But maybe the kids are suffering because <laughs> Satan currently has fasted. <laughs> and the father's going, man, I'm playing the long game with him. <laughs> and I often, it hit me last week that uh, <coughs> one of my friends is going through like a very hectic uh, split. Mm -hmm. And he said this, and it made me reflect on this thing I just said even more. He said, as we divorce, I'm getting a parenting plan to make sure I'm good with the mother, right? Like, so that it's it's documented mm -hmm. because I can't trust her. Mm -hmm. Sheesh. Nah. Just in, in the erratic emotions of mm -hmm. wanting to control things. Yeah. Nah. But I'm not getting the contract for the kids. You know what I mean? I'm good with the kids. Mm -hmm. Theirs and mine is with blood. Mm -hmm. Mine and hers is with paper, mm -hmm. right? But I need that contract to protect yes. the yeah. kids, mm -hmm. right? So when I say the Bible is a constitution, you know, we very many times feel like, why the hell are you making us do all of these hard things, God? Mm -hmm. It's like, no, I'm not protecting you from that guy, lady, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> it. it. <laughs> I made the law so that it can't get to you. And if you follow the law, it can't get to you. You know? Sure. And it's like, whoa! That is so well rounded. You know? <laughs> so I how you connected that. That was that was that was brilliant. So, yeah, so <laughs> that the point is, right? God's got skeletons, okay? <laughs> Don't care about my father. <laughs> it's but also that we know nothing of. Also, the thing I'm doing right now is a kind of relationship I have with God. Mm -hmm. In joke, it's like Jacob and Jacob is telling his name to Israel. It's like we wrestle, yeah. you know? Tell him honestly, he likes engagement. That's my honest feeling. It's like I can hide it from you so that nobody else knows that I just thought that. But yeah. he can see it, right? Yeah, yeah. So I have an honest engagement with him, right? Like when I say, hey, Father God, I'm horny right now. Like, and I, I need to, you know, where we I'm at? Flesh, where, right? where we at? Where we at to play? You know? I'm flesh. You, you did this. Respectfully. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, from that perspective, that's, that's my perspective on the whole thing. And, when you let go of control for yourself, mm -hmm. yo, very tough. Thing to he do. shows up in such beautiful ways, man. It is. You know why? You're really strong. Man. Because the thing you think is you, the realm of the devil, your mind. It's not you. It's a tool. 
Mm-hmm. So as your mind becomes a tool, and you see it as a tool, it changes your perspective. You know the hardest people to actually get to God are smart people. Like, I say this without joking. King I'm looking at what's on my knee. I'm a deep thought. <laughs> but a friend who likes to say, I'm staying there with that. The other way to get to God is with these deep thoughts, you know? Um, notice that your mind is present. Have you ever watched Revolver? No. Everyone should watch Revolver. Movie? Movie. Okay. Guy Ritchie. I'm going to watch it. Oh my god, please go watch Revolver. I'm going to explain what I'm describing so beautifully, like in an action movie. Yeah. That's the importance of the arts, you know? I think you posted about it. And Yo, I said watch guys, it. watch Revolver, yeah. Guy Ritchie. Oh man. I, I think I think if I have enough money, I'm just going to host Revolver watching parties. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Speaking of the movies, uh, when, the, when, when TPF started. Ah, let's not talk about Scary. Please, let's not talk about Scary. Was there was the Ikki for Jen, then there was staring. Oh my god, I have no interest in talking about this. Frustrated me to no end. Um, from its inception, it's mm-hmm. just, it was hell. We had a great night, yeah. opening night, yeah. right? But it was one hell of a campaign. In fact, there's some things we need to do with the crowd to try to find a, a way to get them back into the right place. Mm-hmm. But it was, it was a monstrous failure. Yeah. It was a it was, it was hubris. That's the best way I can put it. Man, we were winning with the people's fund. Like yeah. Crazy. Like you know, at the time we were starting a bank. Yeah. We were funding campaigns. Yeah. We were just, I think we just, we were just starting. We just hit our first million or first second million. Mm-hmm. So I was like, whoa, we we're winning. We could do and everything. That, that happened what, in a matter of months, though. Because yeah, like, by then you were four months. Yeah. By the end of that year, it was a hundred mil. Mm-hmm. So to to me, it looked like two. Yeah. But two, yeah. But, uh, two, yeah. but to me, it looked like. Dudes are winning. Like, yeah. major win. Yo, we had the wins at our back. Like, yo. Like, crazy. And weirdly, it, was, it had to do a lot with surrender. Mm-hmm. So I was definitely not, not, not a Jesus follower there. Mm-hmm. I, I hesitate to call myself Christian. I can't, for the life of me, call myself Christian. <clears throat> because of the political connotations of that word now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's... I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in his teachings. I'm not part of the 2.6 billion waiting to die, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not. Um, uh, yeah, anyway. Yeah. We had the wind on our back. Um, with the wind on our back, man, we were going to do some crazy, crazy things, right? Mm-hmm. There's nothing I touched that didn't turn to gold, man. Yeah. Even that in mind. that frustration... At that moment, like even in that frustration, we had that launch night. Yeah. And it was so beautiful. Like we had a cinema. Yeah. And we were showing in a movie, there's a I forgot its name. Yeah. It was a really good movie. Um I was hell though. We suffered. Then even the other showing the other nights where we were supposed to be showing, the tent broke, the supplier messed up things, tent almost fell on a pregnant woman. They would have died. That thing weighs like a ton. Hey. Like we just saw it deflating. We're like, I'm a this is not going lower. Then we had to run inside and tell everyone to get yeah. out. Oh. Oh, itchy. <laughs> then hired I'm not gonna talk about them because that went to ego. I'm gonna talk about them. Yeah. <laughs> um hired somebody we shouldn't have mm-hmm. who had promises in no end, we ended up fighting them for not paying them. Like, I know my new business. You said you're going to bring in sales. doesn't have sales. Yeah. Come pay you. Like, what am I going to pay you with? <laughs> ah, went all to be go. I hope that lady's doing well, though. I hope, though, I, I, I don't hold any grudges against her. I'm sure I'm sorry. I wonder if I don't apologize to her. I need to go call her and apologize to her. Thank then. you for the apology. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say names. No, no. <laughs> I think I should call her and apologize for the payment that didn't happen. Yeah. Um, would, you make, would you make the payment? Or we ended up making the payment. Oh, at that time, it was, it was a bit of a mess. Mm-hmm. You know? So the journey with the People's Fund. Uh, so I saw, I saw uh, a clip from the OG Nebsa where he, I think you guys were at his house. Like, this is like the beginning, beginning stages. And there was the whiteboard. And I'm there, I'm seeing like small numbers there and you're there doing the lecture there and I'm just like, what the heck is going on? 
with these chaps like the why the all in one room and i remember mzu was also them just like, why the all in one room it 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 can't be it can't be right that like something big is going to come out of that what what sparked the idea for tpf psychedelics i keep telling you psychedelics <laughs> psychedelics are the answer to everything um the <laughs> second answer to everything god is the <laughs> um Yo, TPF, I was doing a campaign um, for a petrochemical company. Mm-hmm. Killing it! We were giving away Ushesha. Yeah. Uh, Skumba and Moiti were on that campaign. Mm-hmm. I think I can mention them. Yeah. Um, so we conceptualized that. So I, on a high, on a lead high, mm-hmm. conceptualized that campaign. Okay. Uh, that, ah, man. You know what? If you really want to get. BP, oh sorry, I've said that. BP, yeah. sorry, BP, if you don't want to be associated with me. It's cool, <laughs> I still love you. Um, <laughs> uh, I was like, oh man, you know what would be great if you want to get, like, a truly get things going? A friend of mine actually had a TV show that he had proposed to them, which they bought into. Um, Conceptualize the campaign, and I wrote the script for that voiceover. Mm-hmm. Uh, Man, like, yo, that period of my life, like, when I look back at it, right? Yo, they went to Lela. Like, when I say I was, like, went to Lela, I, like, thought, I thought I shat God, you know? Like, you know what you think you shat God? Like, that's how crazy that period was, right? Um, it was the weed. I don't think it was the weed. I think the weed slowed me down. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Psychedelics. <laughs> this is with you guys. Um, but, yeah, so... Uh, was doing that campaign mm. very bored because the hard part is in the conceptualization and setup. Then after that, you're just building, you're building a corporate for maintenance, right? Yeah. Um, which gets very boring for someone like me. So yeah. I almost started a almost started a casino in that time. A whole casino or oh, online casino. Okay, like, yeah. Because no, I there's no website I haven't built. I sold petrol online. That's yeah. That's the reference to Petrol Online. Uh, we developed a whole competition to win the Kusherche. People would submit their slips. We had an auditor. Actually, met TPF's auditors through that audit process. Mm-hmm. Through another friend. Weird how life just connected. Yeah. Like that. Um, yeah, I sold everything. I sold perfume. I thought I was going to be a billionaire for perfume uh, online. Yo, <laughs> first month, I think we did a few hundred thousand yeah. in sales of perfume. Like, first month, we opened the store. Eh, suppliers aren't giving us fakes. <laughs> I got called by the head of brands. Um, so there's this guy who holds all of the licenses for perfumes in South Africa. Mm-hmm. Um, he called us up and said, what you're doing is illegal. Now, I'll tell you something you don't know about perfumes. Mm-hmm. I don't like that guy, so I can tell you this. Uh, <laughs> I'm joking. I, we are, I don't know you from a bar of soap. We spoke once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, perfumes, their prices have nothing to do with... Um, substance right mm-hmm. as most things that are bad but it has nothing to do with substance okay actually the price is controlled by that guy through the mandate he has through the brands right mm-hmm. there's a company called escort it sells perfumes yeah it can go much lower than it currently is yes it's forced by law not to go to the prices lower than that so it's at the bottom bottom of the price range it's forced by that license agreement not to go that low because they are cheaper than your usual retailers. Yeah. They're forced. They can't go lower than this. Um, Sheesh. In order to maintain their license. Mm. And even if you were to import through, let's say, a Dubai channel and whatnot, and you can't advertise a price lower than that price. So I'd say one of the most lucrative businesses, um, like for the brands, not for retailers. Yeah. Because I think about, cost is about 10% of the retail price. Yeah. Uh, maybe even less, maybe five percent. Fuck no. For perfumes, especially when you go to the five thousand rand perfumes, yeah. there you're talking less than one percent. It has nothing to do with the substance. It has to do with brand maintenance, which talks to what Josie is like as a as a concept, mm. right? It's all about brand representation. Mm. There's nobody here to tell the truth. Um, my friend likes to say Josie niggas. When he says Josie niggas, he's like. I'm not talking about people born or live in Jersey. I'm talking about people who subscribe to the Jersey lifestyle, right? Mm-hmm. Or bullshit, yeah. right? Uh, or Mashai. 
like, and the worst kind of Masha is Masha to yourself, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, what he means by Josie niggas is people who can't tell the truth to themselves. It's very, and you know, we say that sentence very like it's very hard to tell the truth to yourself. Um, before the podcast started, we were talking about it, yeah, right? yeah. Um, about people like to talk about their feelings and thoughts being the truth. Mm-hmm. Like, shut up, that's your feelings and thoughts. Uh, it's not, hey, it's hey, not my truth. My bro. truth. And you use that as an excuse to get away with saying some bullshit things. Yeah. It's not your truth. It's, it's, your, it's your tension. That's what it is. <laughs> and you should be called as such. Um, but like, if, if you want to put a brand before your truth and interaction with another human. So what I mean by that is, the perfume thing is a great example. If I'm, let's say me and you, let's say me and you are in business, right? Mm. And as we're in business, um, you ask me how business is. I'm like, it's great, yeah? And then you ask me what was my turnover last month. And I'm like, I had 10,000. Mm. Previous month, I didn't make anything. Previous month, we had 2,000. Then you ask me, what the fuck do you mean it's great? Like, what are you talking about, right? And then I go, nah, because like the prospects are good. I'm gonna look at you and go, you should look at me and go, brother, as if there's copies, right? There's a room. There's a room. <laughs> uh, and, 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 yeah, maybe you could consult that. Mm. I can hear the social media voices right now going, ah, he's insulting mental illness. Right. I can't stand social media guys. Yo. Bro, I've anyway. never been happy being off that thing. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, and the point I'm trying to make is you doing a representation, or I'm doing a representation, right? Because I'm scared of the truth mm-hmm. that I fucking suck at business, mm-hmm. right? I'm not doing well at this thing, right? It's tough. Mm-hmm. I tell the truth and say, man, it's tough. I don't know where the next thing's coming from. Mm-hmm. Then we're going to start having a great conversation, you know? Like, I remember when we walked in, you asked me how's business. I'm like, it's great. Mm-hmm. And I asked you, and you're like, ah, business is business. Yeah. <laughs> now I can have a real conversation with you. Mm-hmm. And I say it's great because my measure of business, not even the turnover, the turnover is pretty decent. Like, last month we did 10 bucks, right? How is that pretty decent? <laughs> this nigga. This <laughs> nah, I know that in like, hey, this, 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 this. <laughs> Decent, but also for for your side, I get, I get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we had some tough times, man. It's been a while. We haven't done a ten million rand month since shoot twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. Okay. We haven't done a. So I also don't want to lie. Yeah. To be representative. Yo, it's been a tough, tough period. Mm-hmm. Um, but last month, yeah, is the result of a lot of changes for the past few months, right? Um, and, but the point is, man, now you made me forget my thought. Now I feel like a, a, a rabbit old shit. <laughs> Um, but the point I was making around that, like we did a pretty decent month. Oh yes, we did a pretty decent month. We did ten bars. Mm-hmm. That's not my measure of a good company. Mm-hmm. And we should all start learning this for ourselves. Whatever. But my measure is how happy are the people I'm working with, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because then they give me productivity. One hundred percent. And and how good are the people that are around? And when we are cracking the formula quite nicely. Mm-hmm. We're figuring it out and we're getting it to work and it's beautiful. Those who are supposed to be on the bus are on the bus, mm. right? And we're getting more on the bus. Those who are not supposed to be on the bus have left the bus, mm. right? And as we work through and churn through that, it's going to be ridiculous. It will be unstoppable. Yeah. Because in the early days of TPF, I was the giant. Yeah. If you've ever read um, what's that book, Good to Great. Good to great, one of the things, one of the most dangerous things is being a level four leader. Mm-hmm. Basically, you're a big charismatic leader with weak generals, mm-hmm. right? So everything depends on you. Mm-hmm. When you leave, you're going to have to die. Man, I haven't been to the office this week. <laughs> when did you see that? that <laughs> I think that, that, that shit, that, and, I'm, and I'm not sure, probably a lot of entrepreneurs don't do that, but essentially the, the idea is to build this thing so one can be able to step back and it be able to move without your presence because yeah. you because because then what's the point of constant like being the driver throughout throughout no matter how big it is it's still dependent on you for it to stay as big as it is yeah but 
You see, me and you are making the English simple for a very hard thing. Um, <laughs> I mean, you don't start a business unless you're trying to feed something in yourself, right? Mm-hmm. That's more than just food and money. Um, so your ego is tied to that business, yes. right? So I get it. Like, I also get it. Like, But also over time, I mean, as one grows, because remember we had the conversation when I was telling one of the other business was up for acquisition, and, yeah. I, and, I, and I, I, I was very honest with you. I was just like, the greed in me is not red, mm. right? And then you were just like, no, you just sell, let, mm. let, let it go. And with growth, th- those things happen. Like you just, one has to be okay with letting it go. As, and it's not easy, but the, the, the more one is, is, is in business, you, it, one has to train themselves to be less attached emotionally to the business. I hear you. So one of the things that, that you said there, you know, like as one grows, then you said, it's not easy, né? Mm-hmm. You see that, that small slip of the tongue, it's not easy, né? It's like those montages in movies, né? Mm-hmm. Where the whole movie is us watching this character development drama. Then the actual training is like a 30 second most montage, right? Yeah. And then life carries on. And then now he's, I see, he's Miyagi's son. Yeah. <laughs> he's <laughs> Daniel's son. <laughs> he's the Miyagi, Daniel's son, right? Mm-hmm. When most of the work is in the 30, min- uh, 30 second mm-hmm. montage, right? Um, it's the same with the it's not easy. Like, that's the entire work. Mm-hmm. And also, you have to choose if you actually want that. So, that part of also not being representation is being honest with yourself. Mm-hmm. Like, if you built this thing for to feed your ego, kudos to you. It's not right or wrong. Mm-hmm. It's not right or wrong. Mm-hmm. Like, if it does, then let it feed your ego. Mm-hmm. Like, then go all in, you know? Not all of us are going to list companies. Not all of us are going to. Some of us want to build very sizable ego feeders. Mm. And you're, you're, you're well within your rights. And if you can, do it. Mm. Like, do it. Like, man, don't stand in front of the mirror pleasing humans. Like, don't. If you want your ego fed, feed your ego. Because if you're going to build that business, it's going to add value to society. I don't care what the reason was. Do you know what I mean? Build it. You're going to be happy. Your family's going to be happy. And I have miserable employees who are like, man, you're a slave driver. Mm. But that's, they're getting paid for it. Mm. Another thing that I hate about the social economy is that we starting to talk in very weird terms, right? We're in social contracts. Mm-hmm. And we're breaking them very badly. Mm. And what I mean by breaking them very badly is that when I'm employed, I'm in a social contract, right? Mm-hmm. One company needs to be held accountable for all it does. I also have to be held accountable. But let's not get something twisted. Yeah? There is no obligation for you to like it or love the job. None. None. Because ultimately it's a trade. It's a trade. You guys are in a... Man, I dislike so many of my customers. As people. <laughs> I can respect that. I can respect that. But I have to do business with them. Do you understand what I mean? That, that's literally the only business partner I, I love. Yeah. The rest, after that, you know, I, I, probably a year or two ago, I'd vent about the old guys. That, that, <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Yeah, no. Fuck. Careful what you say on podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't talking about my business partners, I was talking about my clients. <laughs> um, but it's part, it's like, it's a trade. Like, such a fucking mother's house. Like, you know, like, there's a point we have to get to where we have to grow up. Like, grow a pair. Yes. Not a pair, grow a vagina. Because balls are actually weak. Vaginas are strong. Quite strong. It, right? So it would stand... There's a point. The entire human. Yeah, 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 yeah. Testicles, you touch them, they start screaming. <laughs> um, there's a point we have to grow a fucking vagina. Right? Um, and, like, just do the job. Like, you know? Honest to God. Honest to God. Just do, do the damn thing. Do the it's, damn thing. Like, it's not a favor. That's the thing. I, I think I think people people want to feel like if they they doing the company a favor when you are hired to do what what you said you're able to do. So 100%. you're trading your skill and your time 100%. for the remuneration at the end of the month. So if no one's doing anyone any favors, hundred percent. We don't have to like each other, but God damn it, let's get this done. Let's get this done. And then I and then remember the thing we're talking about about the. the the dichotomy of truth, yeah. right? the divine dichotomy, mm. the two opposing views you can send to a mm. center, right? Mm. So one, get get your head right. This is a contract, right? On the other side, 
<laughs> do anything with it, <laughs> right? Life's too short, right? And how how we've reconciled it, at least at the people's front, mm-hmm. is that one, we don't focus on your performance that much, mm-hmm. especially in the beginning. Mm-hmm. What we focus on is your culture fit. A culture mm-hmm. fit means is how how deep is your accountability. Mm-hmm. So the foundation and and, and, and the, the fulcrum by which TPF turns is on our ability to tell the truth mm-hmm. and accountability, right? How am I going to take responsibility for what has gone wrong and am I going to fix it? Am I making it my responsibility? Those are the only people we work with. If you can't do that, we can't work with you. Like, we can't, you can't exist in our environment, mm-hmm. right? From that, performance happens. Sure. Like, I wish I could teach this to everyone. It's weird. We developed a team code. Sometimes when I look at it, I'm like, man, this is like remnants of the Bible. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't call God God of personal development. Right? So if you pray, you say, God, I want peace. The Lord is going to give you trials. Trials. Why? So you can learn how to have peace. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, I call God God of personal development. So I ask you for specific things. Gondele is for the three AMG, you know? Like I'm asking for the specific That's my things. things. <laughs> That's my things, dog. <laughs> right? <laughs> I ask him for very specific things. Mm. Um, because I when I waver, I'm usually praying wrong. Right? <laughs> then he gives me the things that teaches God give me wisdom. So they give you troubling problems to solve. <laughs> right? Like Hey, no, that's a tongue but deep. <laughs> and I watch humans suffer with the disease of death. It's a disease, this thing, where we want to demonstrate to everyone our intellectual capacity and our ability to reason. Mm. And all you're doing is you're fucking yourself in the ass. Because now you built this cobweb or, or, or this maze yeah. that you're covered under <laughs> that you are sitting sure. in. So that we have to figure out your thoughts. And then now these feelings are things that are problems because you built them and constructed them on your identity. When the original problem was, maybe you were horny, maybe you were thirsty, maybe you were lonely. Like, that's it. <laughs> it could have been such a simple, simple concept. Thing. <laughs> no, so the thing is, when my throat is parched and unlubricated, what ends up happening is that these concepts happen where I start thinking about women. I think it's a representation of what happens in my mind, right? And I think on that beach, in the dream, is a palm tree. Dog, are you saying you're thirsty, hungry, lonely, and, and a horny? Like, you know, how did you that people? Whoa, whoa, what's what? How old is that boy? Like, how old is that boy? Oh, cool and clean. <laughs> As Billy said. I actually have a question, Miranda. How often has it happened that uh, somebody is the culture fit that you have, but they don't end up bringing the results? Has that ever happened? So the question is, how often has somebody fit the culture fit and not bring the results? Yeah. Um, so the, for the full answer of that question, no, it doesn't happen. Right? Um, how often do people not fit the culture? No? Uh, we started at a 25% success rate. We're currently at a 60% success rate. Mm. We employed something called top grading. Mm. So before you even come in, you're going through a battery of interviews mm. and assessments and various other things. Mm. Right? We're doing shadow match. I'll give you guys all of the tools to run a freaking successful company. We do shadow match, mm-hmm. which evaluates your habits. Mm-hmm. We can see your habits, what strong habits you have. Do you have strong people habits? Do you have strong action habits? And what's your conceptual fitness? How do you think? And all of those things. We do all of that before you even come to assessments, right? Like mm-hmm. those interviews. They do a three hour interview um, where we're, we're breaking apart all of the pieces of the thing. Then you do an assessment. Then post the assessment, you come and you. Final hurdle the door is me, culture fit. <laughs> and I'm just asking you accountability questions the whole meeting. Um, non stop. I can even I'll even give you this formula because people still fail it. Because yeah. you can't fake accountability. That's yeah. the W. Mm-hmm. You can't you can't fake it. You can pretend, mm-hmm. right? But you can't fake it. Um, you can't rehearse for it. People who fail at our company, people who come to the the, the thing and have rehearsed how to do an right. interview. Mm-hmm. So now it's moved to about I'd say a, Doddling between 60 and 80 percent success rate for finding people who are culture fit because we will batter you out. So the system cleans out people who have not fit in quite early on. Um, Bloody job. Bloody job. And then, so what from from where did first of all, did you did you ever think 
when you started the people's fund did you think it would be here and moving in the direction that it's going or was it a let's try this out in the with the idea of helping um entrepreneurs who can't fulfill their peers both those things are true but small true what i mean by small true is when i think it'd be here i think it, i thought it'd be much further okay People start moving too slowly for me. And this is coming from a company that did 1.2 million in the first year, 2.5 in the second, 42 million in the third, 150 in the fourth, mm. right? It's moving too slowly. Because I had a psychedelic trip and I saw the future. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, then we dipped back. Uh, Post COVID, we dipped back to about 80, probably going to do 100 this year. Mm. Um, I thought we'd be further, I thought we'd be doing a billion by this time. But that's just my hubris. Like right now, it's 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 at what now? Is it half? Half of the bill? No, not the five hundred million. Yeah. No. So the value. <laughs> so the value. Of Man, is right. I'm not gonna describe the value just yet. There's some mm-hmm. deal we're signing. Um, okay. Yeah, we yeah, are not gonna discuss the value right now. Okay. Uh, I always want to explain to people that. You know, like the idea of evaluation is the most beautiful thumb sucking you'll ever find in the world. Mm-hmm. It's the most gorgeous thumb sucking you'll ever find in the world. Sentimental view when we put a bunch of numbers to back our feelings on it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, if I was to value it with, <laughs> if I was to value my people right now, I valued it at, personally, I valued it at least two billion. Because I know what's going to do for the next five years yeah. with the people that we have in Can't place. Be. right? Valuations that are out there in the market are nowhere near that. Not even even close. Mm -hmm. Not even a tenth. Just just under twenty, right? Um, So yeah, so yeah, fuck value. I'd rather look at what's the impact we've had. Yeah, you know, year on year, how much how much funding are we doing? How much? How many entrepreneurs we touched? Mm -hmm. Right. So to date, we've outlaid more than three hundred million in capital. We helped almost 2,000 entrepreneurs. Um, we've enabled more than half a billion in turnover. We even signed a CIFA deal that's worth half a billion for the next five years. Mm-hmm. So each year we're going to be adding 100 million of funding. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going to sign more of those deals. So that's exciting as a statistical number if we want to put numbers to it. Mm-hmm. But man, I want to say this as humbly as I can, right? I can't say this one. <laughs> say it the way you can. <laughs> However it comes out. I love all you diggers, but... In terms of entrepreneurship in South Africa, we haven't even begun, you know? Mm. We haven't even started. Um, everyone's playing. Everyone's fucking mm. playing. Like, I was reflecting on this two days ago. Two or three days ago. Like when I sell money for a living and I'm, for some reason people called me one of the innovative best in South Africa. Okay? I'm, I'm like, I don't respect society because society doesn't respect itself. You know? And when I say we're playing, it's like, TPF want to do some great things and many other businesses uh, I'm going to participate in, right? But those numbers don't reflect the truth of anything that's happening. Like the needle needle. You know, like the impact that's happening in people's lives. We have a team of about 21 people, right? Um, so the five just started this week. Mm-hmm. 25 people who are going to be giants in their own right in their lives. In their old 20 year olds, right? 20 something year olds. Mm-hmm. They're going to be giants in their own right in their lives. And the girls are even struggling to find boyfriends. Or if they come to the company with a boyfriend, they lose them. One, we pay really well. Right. <laughs> I suck the power they live in the house. <laughs> Secondly, they're exposed to quite quite a socially and emotionally accomplished men mm-hmm. in the workplace. Mm-hmm. So they can see the weakness in their men. So Jesus. When you lose your girlfriend, come make her work at the house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Guys. <laughs> 
If your girl is unemployed, let her be. <laughs> Don't take her to the people's point. <laughs> no, but if your girl is unemployed, you should be taking care of her. You know, we never discussed this enough. Mm. We always excuse men, man. Like, and I say we always excuse men. One, I don't believe. Ash, what do I believe? Let me think about that for a second. Men should provide. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Women shouldn't turn it transactional because then otherwise you're not prostitute. Yes. Okay. It's a social contract. Um, and I want to be clear with what I'm describing. Ish. Well, people are going to get lost in the nuance of what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I don't think... <sighs> I like fucking putting my foot in the mouth. <laughs> I think when women work, they should choose to work because they're pursuing a passion. I think when, when, work, when men work, they should work because they have to. It's their duty. Mm -hmm their responsibility. Um, any woman who's working out of necessity be better be under the age of 30. Mm -hmm. um, or single. Right? So, I'm sorry, Lucas. So, <laughs> no, because I mean, I'm sure there are going to be some dudes who just like, why? Because then what happens when it's a, it's a normal household where you know, the guy's not high earning, he has no business, he's just he's just a guy in a cubicle, gets about fifteen K. The girl has about ten and they just try and live a normal life. No. Cool. Cool. I have nothing else to say. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Like I'm not trying to look down on that in any way. Like cool. whatever rocks your boat, cool. Mm -hmm. I just don't think that's how it works best. I that's my personal opinion. I don't think it works best like that. I think if men focused on making more money, my making money is not hard. Mm -hmm. It's you that's hard. It's yours. It's yourself. Mm -hmm. Getting over yourself is the hard thing. You know, mm -hmm. it's not the making of the money. It's getting over yourself, finding your source, finding your center, finding the spiritual center, and then the money becomes easy, mm -hmm. right? So the men with money. I don't have that, <laughs> don't have that much money like, yet. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 you know the point the point I'm trying to make man five years ago I was living in the back room it's a wait with my first boy with my girlfriend at the time mm -hmm. and even then even then I knew I'm supposed to provide right mm -hmm. I wasn't doing a good job of it mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but even then I knew I was, I was supposed to provide but I think do, do you think it's instinctive for men to know that they're supposed to provide hence like and I'm not excusing behavior. Don't get me wrong. Hence, more often than not, oh, no, let me phrase that right. There are times where when a guy is not employed and then the woman is, the guy tends to then become, you know, frustrated because things are not happening for him because he wants to do certain things. So he doesn't know how to lash out that frustration mm -hmm. and it ends up being in the wrong way. Are we justifying his... No, that's how I was being a bitch, nigga. No, no, no. I want to make sure, and I do not want to, I do not want to disregard men going through tough times because we do have the highest suicide rates. Right? Yeah, definitely. Because the thing is, it's not, it's not, but it's, you, it's not you, easy. You take it out of. I hundred percent, but it's not easy because so. And I was trying to explain this to someone the other day, is that because the uh, uh, watching uh, accountability, man. But you know, for me, everything starts with accountability. True, and I completely agree with that, right? But then you know, there's there's always there's always the the nuance in, in certain things, right? So hold on, hold on. <laughs> I'm, I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm listening. <laughs> the nuance. Right. So, um, uh, they had an issue with uh, the the lady who made it flower, right? Oh, yeah. um, and and the, she ex she de she described how the incident happened and whatnot and whatnot, right? And so before the the, the description of how the, the incident happened, everyone just was like, I, it was a fight, she stabbed him, cool, yeah? And I was like, you, you've seen documentaries of crimes of passion. People see red, you know, you, you're in blind anger and it's pure rage and there's nothing else and, you know, that action then happened. So, and we're not excusing, excusing the, the behavior, but 
it does happen. So that's what I'm saying. Like, we're not say I'm, I'm not excusing or making excuses for dudes who then take out their frustrations on you know the wrong person, especially physically or even emotionally. But the frustration that takes place with not being able to provide does happen. Hundred percent. So one of the things I just want to clear up with what you're saying, mm-hmm. yeah? you know, like some men don't believe in masturbation, yeah? mm-hmm. and because they don't believe in masturbation, there's a cultural norm where they come from that mm-hmm. you just take away, right? Mm-hmm. Carry it out, and <clears throat> not justifying rape, but it does happen. How is that different to what you just said? No. <laughs> Stop and think about it. Stop and think about it. Stop and think about it. <laughs> it's, it can't be the same. Yeah. It can't. It can't be because I mean, look. Uh, the inability to get employment, and your, your religion or whatever you believe in, prohibiting you from busting a nut. I don't think those. Those are parallel. Well, I want to check something. Why do you think men get jobs? Why do you think they get jobs? In in what? So pussy. So pussy. Like, let's be clear. <laughs> men do everything they do for women. Like, like you can you can lay it up all you want, right? Men and I was about to lay it up. So to, <laughs> to simplify, that's, that's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> yeah. Men do everything they do to get the highest selection of women. Fact. Like, right? Fact. So that is true. Hence, dudes switch up when when they get like when they didn't have money. They yeah, you want to come to at that time. And then like, now, yeah, now, now you have great. Like, <laughs> yeah, true. It's the nature true. of life has keys. <laughs> this is why this is why I'm actually a feminist, right? I'm yeah. like, man, men can get richer. Most women can't become prettier. Like it, it sucks, right? Yeah. So let's protect them as much as possible. Yeah, there's, there's qualifications to that, but you know, <laughs> allow them space to, to exist. And this is probably why I'm going to hire a woman as much as I Possibly. believe, yeah. right? Because it's like, man, get your own, don't be under the social norms. Yeah, yeah. Part of our thing is changes. Is, but the point I'm making to this is that as, as soon as we put depth to ideas, we lose the plot, right? Um, that guy is frustrated because he can't work. Normal. Who do you take it out on? Not normal. Mm-hmm. Flabba and his girl get into a fight. Normal. She stabs him. Not normal. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. I've got religious beliefs that won't let me masturbate. Normal. I'm going to take it in can. Not normal. You know? And all the not normal is at the line of accountability. You know? It, it, it's not... I'm not trying to negate the real human emotion of struggling through an economy like South Africa. Right? Mm. Fuck, it's tough for men in South Africa. Like, I, I don't mean that lightly. I do not mean that lightly. We have a 60% poverty rate. You know, like, if you looked at the stats in South Africa with violence and the various other things, right? Men are killing each other like crazy. Mm-hmm. The media would have us men are killing women, but mm, they kill men at 10 times the rate they kill women. Mm. But men are killing each other, right? And when you look at the violence levels of that, yeah? You look at other countries that have similar violence levels. There's a lot to do with income inequality. So if you fix the income of men to a large degree, mm-hmm. you'd solve most of the violence. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Agreed. So um, I say that to say I'm not negating what you're saying. I'm in agreement, mm-hmm. right? In some regards, that the violence would be less mm-hmm. on a macro level. Yes. On an individual level, I'm still holding you accountable. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. I'm saying where now? Yeah. yeah. You're, no. you're being, fl- man, I, like, I get it, like, we're humans, we're weak, you know, like, we're, we're flesh. That's why we need to go back to the Constitution. Did I bring that around? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's why you have to go back to the Constitution and ask for strength from God, you know? Because mm-hmm. you're not going to do this life thing effectively with your own strength. Imagine all the things you have to keep in your head that you have to, you have to keep in check and make sure that they're working right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because every moment you're worried, and I'm not trying to convert people, I'm just going, man, it's effective. Like, uh, it's just effective. Like, I have far fewer s- periods of deep unhappiness, mm-hmm. you know? There was a period I went six months where I couldn't stop crying, I was so happy. Like, I was crying all the time. Like, you just see me, I'd just be crying. Because I'm so happy, I was filled. 
I never felt happiness in my soul, in my being. I always felt like these fleeting emotions of niceness. Yes. The lustful joy, mm. right? Sure, when I found God, like, I couldn't stop crying. I was like, man, is this what I've been running from? Like, man, whoa. Like, I just want to cry. I just had so much love, like, rest emanating from me, you know? And life happens still, you know, because <laughs> I'm human. <laughs> and it's, like, gone into a balanced place where I'm not just sitting on a park bench just being happy about life. Yeah, yeah. I'm putting some work in as well, which is going to bring frustration and all of those things. But bringing a prayer life into that. And it's been absolutely fantastic for me. You know? yeah. And I call it Gloria Mojes. I don't think it's... <laughs> man, why I'm struggling to call myself Christian is because I... Sh- <sighs> no offense to it, but the church is so ineffective. People go to Sunday to look pretty. Man, Gloria Mojes, you know? Like, you can effectively get your way to move forward using the Bible. It's got the constitution. Same thing as Amomazians are. People talking about snakes and whatnot, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Those things are weaker than Jesus. Like, so I told you I'd tell you uh, later on in the interview. So we do deliverance ministry, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yo, you guys call us firefighter churches. <laughs> Yo, you must have fired me. <laughs> oh, firefighter churches. Uh, <laughs> and we cast out demons and we get rewarded for that as well, mm-hmm. right, um, in the spirit, you know, um, I can tell you now, I'm the next, there's no kingdom, be it, be it other religions, be it Ungoma and all of those things, every knee shall bow to the name of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow, like, mm-hmm. and every knee has bowed, like, like, I, I never mind, you know, a lot of people back when I'm not sure, it's like, nah, that spirit needs to be given Jesus Christ. Like, we're ministering even to the dead now. Eh, saying too much, but you can chat about it. Mm. I mean, that spirit needs to be ministered to go to heaven because now it's eating off of your flesh and blood mm. to stay here. Nobody um, you twice about Friday, but twice is until you when in your God. Nobody needs blood. Mm. And I say this to say, there are very many things we don't understand because the church has been ineffective. And there's also miseducation. A lot. A lot. Calling Christianity. And I think, so, you know, colonial. You know, because the thing is, so the bulk of the church, especially where most black people go to, and I'm not, not really like young black people, but, you know, from, like, from 70s, going all the way that side, there's there's miseducation I see. There's no form of education. Like it's 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 a bunch of hot air. Like it's just it's a lot of things that our generation have had to grow up with mm-hmm. without even properly understanding anything, without being able to um yeah, that's gonna happen. Um yeah. <laughs> It'll do, yeah? Yeah. So, you know, the just... But you might just pause. Pause. Where's the lyric is on that? His belief is my belief. Yeah, I could see. Yeah. It was church for me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can't say I'm a Christian. I go to church, yes, but I cannot define myself as a Christian. Why do you say that? Because of the church I grew up in. What's it called? A sense of God. It was more charismatic. He, yeah, and they yeah, you're better off in charismatic churches than it wasn't even charismatic. It, 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 so so Rima and them are more charismatic. That's what it's a black church, bro. Like a sense of God. It's what I grew up in. It's a black church. It's just comes to many many things. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you just close it completely. This, Actually, the the way the way you 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 like if if you were to run a sermon right now, like you would you would get so many souls because of the type of teachings you would give, and it it makes someone think about but goddamn like beyond just uh, praise Jesus that's it. There's like 
the way the way you connect the dots as to how everything has just been working out and why this is the holistic part of it and what brings it all together is because of this super you know power that that, that you believe in you man we should open a church because we go get some folk right? <laughs> we will make some good money right? <laughs> like it, it will it will blow right but then the church that i grew up in i couldn't stand it man it like like when because for me it took some time to just stop the church thing where it's just like okay let me just try and figure this thing out without yeah without that um, it, it also it's also yeah. very oppressive and i hate that it it, it i hated that it that, that how oppressive it was towards oh, okay. what what meant it so in 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 the church uh women were not allowed to like hold an entire sermon yeah. um because uh, most people take two it's five minutes you know. all right okay take two I uh, just let's finish that convo quick then. Yeah, so it it, it so there were, there were so many things where where uh, women were not allowed to do and how they were supposed to dress. You're not supposed to wear pants and all these things. Like I just I just hate how that was. Like it wasn't you didn't have freedom to come as you are and just be accepted as you are because you are loved by God. You, you gotcha, came. gotcha. I think I think why we get lost in that, right? Um is because of you know when Moses left like led the Israelites out of Egypt mm -hmm. he tried to give them the free reign to do whatever they wanted yeah as long as they followed the laws mm -hmm. yeah the basic laws yeah first moment he goes up a mountain those motherfuckers build a, a golden calf and start worshiping it <laughs> this is God and it's like man you guys have broken the first rule like you've broken the main rule already mm -hmm. And so what then he did, right, was say, here are all these laws so that you know you're acting right with God. Mm -hmm. The Pharisees used them a lot, uh, basically, right, um, to, 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 to govern the world. Right? Jesus came through to undo those contracts without breaking them. I remember the first time Timu said that blew my mind, right? He said, okay, these are all the laws. I hear them. I'm not going gonna, I'm not going to break them, right? but I'm going to undo them. I'm going to become the law, right? I'm going to become the means, like the blood of the lamb, right? And what he did was like, yo, it was quite remarkable. Firstly, that guy's an intersectional feminist. Yo, solid one. But that's a story for another day, right? And he was saying, all of these laws, they're there to guide your heart, né? And when they're there to guide your heart, né, is... The important thing is to find your heart with God. Mm -hmm. But when you do, see, like a lot of people read the Ten Commandments backwards. They do the Ten Commandments so that they are good with God. Mm -hmm. What I mean by they're backwards, if you are good with God, you won't want to do the bad things in the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Which is like a big reversal. Yeah. Yeah? Now, churches, because they're struggling with a big congregation, some people listen differently and whatnot, what they often do is they create condemnation laws. You can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this. Depending on what life you're living, right? Like for us in deliverance ministry, it's actually quite strict, right? Um, for my life personally. Uh, I can't just fuck around like, like crazy. Actually, nobody should be just fucking around like crazy. <laughs> There's some things you're pulling, like sexually, right? Um, that, that, that you should be careful of, right? Um, drinking, be careful of that. Like all of these things that bring your mind out of a state of calm, peace, and centering with God, be careful of them, right? Because what they do is they make it easier for you to have something we call loopholes, mm -hmm. right? Or what we used to call sins, you know? Uh, sex is one of the strongest ones. It opens up a loophole. When you have sex with someone, it's arguably one of the biggest um, spiritual acts you can have, right? You guys develop a soul tie, basically. Um, and through that, if Kona tech, or being the one that attack you. You created the perfect loophole for them. So that's where the laws come from. Yeah? Have they been abused for control? 100%. You know? And part of why I'm sort of angry at the church, you know, because now you've lost sheep. Now people, now people, because they're angry at you, they're angry at God. Mm. 
Mm. Like <clears throat> that's that's my only anger with it. But and some some churches are trying to do good. Yeah, you know, a lot, a lot. Uh, and I I don't think it, I don't think necessarily most are trying to be evil. There are evil churches, but not are trying to be evil. It's just loosely how the best way I could describe it is it feels misguided mm. because it's not the best way to a human's heart. Because that's what God is after, hearts, you know, mm. um, hearts, hearts that believe in Him, people that are going to grow in faith mm. and fight the good fight, mm. glorify His name when they get things. Think I want to get rich for myself? <laughs> nah, <laughs> get rich for God. <laughs> like, <laughs> speaking of wealth, right? So, yeah, uh, the People's Fund. What what do we do as a business? Uh, so People's Fund basically what it does is we do purchase order funding. Right. Um, so if somebody's got an order with corporate or government, we provide the capital, um, and then we take a profit share from the order. So that's basically it. Long story short, um, the innovative thing we did was instead of giving credit because black businesses can't afford credit, mm-hmm. we bought the goods and resold them to the entrepreneurs, right, uh, to buy and sell. So they don't have to prove affordability and all of those things. We're actually part of the intergovernmental fintech working group. Mm-hmm. With financial sector conduct authority, prudential authority, SARS, NCR, because they're like, man, we don't know how to regulate you. And mm-hmm. laughed because I was like, I did that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I did that on purpose because your laws are broken. Your laws are not designed for black people. Think about mm-hmm. it for a second. When you're a business that's uh, uh, under a million in assets, right, two hundred and fifty thousand or less, if you want to get credit. Yeah, you get evaluated like an individual, not like a business. So you have to demonstrate affordability. Mm-hmm. So if I've been doing thousand rand a month in sales and I get a purchase order for fifty thousand, I've got no credit to access mm-hmm. because as a business, I do not qualify for credit. If they gave me money, it would be called reckless lending. Mm-hmm. Like this is stupid. What needs to happen? Ah, I go get credit. Man, nothing has fucked black people more than the Credit Act. Well, many things. Fuck me too. But like, like <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm gonna make a bad joke, but I'm gonna say nothing as fuck black people like, like credit acts. I was gonna say, well, have some black dads, but anyway. <laughs> 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 you know what? I was gonna say that I was born in <laughs> That's how you lay it up so that nobody thinks you did this on purpose. <laughs> 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 Yes, that's why do I like trouble so much? <laughs> and you run towards it. <laughs> yes, that's a lot of trouble. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, the Credit Act screws us over. It has a, a presupposition of surety and collateral um, for, 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 for credit and the various other things. Yeah? Now, black people don't have assets to fall back on for uh, surety and that sort of thing. So what we do is we have to demonstrate affordability by taking credit. So now you've got a clothing account that you didn't need in mm-hmm. the first mm-hmm. place. So can we add that sort of food. We're right in the price. So can we add gas? You know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah, so the basic mantra of TPF's changes is um, we're currently doing purchase order funding, but it will be whatever whatever direction it looks like where the biggest need is because right now it's like you want to guess how much government spends on buying from businesses per annum? A billion? Two? Mm-hmm. Yeah, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Trillion. Trillion a year it spent. Do you want to guess how much of that goes to them buying from black businesses? I don't want to guess. Just less than 3-5%. You're even generous. <laughs> it's less than 10%. Just about five percent. So when we call people tenderpreneurs, I go, man, I thought white people living in Pems Bay or something because it's definitely not black people. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a PR thing happening, and I think its its intention is to maintain the status quo mm-hmm. of who buy who government buys from mm-hmm. that likes to paint black entrepreneurs who do tender with government as tenderpreneurs mm-hmm. who are selfish, erratic spenders of money. Mm-hmm. We work with 2,000. We have an impairment rate of less than 4%. Basically, people don't pay us back. Mm-hmm. We have a peak rate of about 40%. So 40% of people come back and do business with us. Mm-hmm. This bullshit is simply not true. There are bad apples like in any other system. Mm-hmm. But it's not true. So what we want to do is change the narrative because 
like any other society or even any other race in South Africa, the government is a means to achieve social order. Mm-hmm. And black people are not using it because they don't want it to. Mm-hmm. Um, so we are starting a campaign where we're going to teach people how to turn left, you know, so that they can get into the system. There's a trillion Africans who are not even scratching 50 billion of them, mm-hmm. barely 50 billion of them. There's a black collective that makes up 90% of the country. Um, and yeah, provide the funding for that. So yeah, yeah, that's that's what it does. It sounds very boring. <laughs> Far from it. All right. So how do how do people get a hold of you? Should the uh, the uh, sure. So if, yeah, if somebody was looking for funding, guys. Also, we're a young company that's figuring things out. We're not making excuses for us. We want to get it wrong sometimes. I saw a comment that's like, ah, this is a fly by night business. It feels like I'm dealing with. I'm like, who oh, this motherfucker? <laughs> fly by night. Fly by please. Oh, <laughs> so, so we're gonna get it wrong sometimes, but we take your criticism on the chin, and we're figuring out. Sometimes people need to be understanding because every business gets it wrong. Even the big guys get it wrong. Like, and that's it's like at ever so often. It's not. It's not all the time. It's not always. Yeah. Like you can't want to bash people like that harshly, especially on social media, so harshly. Yeah. And you must just take it like flat. flat. Do people comments, know what a flat triple M is a fly by night? People work me. so hard. Like it, I realized it touched me because, like, I just looked at that. Somebody was showing me. I was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, where they are right is if we fucked up, we fucked up. Yeah. Right. Um. So yeah. Um. Our website is www.thepeople.co.za. Just click on get funded, and then follow the application. It takes ten questions, and then. Uh, we could we could we could find you um, if you have a purchase order yeah um, and then yeah that's that's about it from us um we, we try to respond as quickly as possible we've added five new people so the response rate should be faster um sure part of the thing that hurt was when we started talking about the CFAT bill everyone came to our doors the backlog that it created trying to tell everyone I ah I see find ma no ma as you find <laughs> <Lendonel>. <laughs> <laughs> but um, with the five new people added, I'm sure we'll be back at the two to five days uh, mark for the application to approval at the very least. At the time we're doing funding in like basically less than a week. Yeah. You apply today, in less than a week you'll be funded. Um, so remember that when when I was, uh, there's there's a friend of mine who was was trying to get back, and that was his like second time. Mm. But then there was like a delay with that other, you see. But the first time, quick. Mm-hmm. And hence, he did, not do, did it again. But so far, I mean, people who have used it have been, have been quite happy. Or oh, have used you guys have been quite happy. So you're doing, you're doing a swell job, man. You're doing a really man, job. when you're selling money, people are going to be happy. No one's going to go hate you. Like, what is it? No, no, no. Chapter like guys, this is real. We don't care about what you do, guys. The other one's a loser. That's why I'm taking so long. So, but I'm joking, man. Thank you, man. Thank you for the kind words and uh, thank you for saying we're doing good work. It gives us meaning and purpose a little bit. Yeah. Remember the conversation that yeah. we started it? Yeah. Um, Shit, that was going to be some dope content if we, if we had that conversation on <laughs> recorded. <laughs> but next time, next time. Oh, we're not recording then. No. We were just going off. Oh shit! Yeah, no, we were just. Go- That's why she was saying that we, it's it's content being being messed up. When I was saying, be careful of that. We were recording. No. No. no you didn't Our initial recording. when before we were there. Yeah. When? We were recording. The party's talking about. No, no. Before before he walked in. Yeah, the party I'm talking about he was in here. Oh yeah, no. We, when, by the time he walked in, that we were recording from there. But pre- prior to that, it was just. I even us left going the meeting because you guys were hosting. <laughs> <laughs> I have one last question, Juliana. Uh, sure. Um, and it's with regards to small business entrepreneurs. They've got this thing of um, they sometimes frown upon being employed elsewhere. Mm-hmm. So if you have that in, uh, entrepreneurial bone in you, you just want to start your own business from immediately after school. Uh, do you think that's a good idea, or do you think it helps to start somewhere and then? You can start your business. I I think a lot of us would short circuit our journey if we started in somebody else's company. I think that. Why I'm struggling to answer, man, I don't like speaking from lack of experience. Yeah? 
I've never been formally, this is the first formally employment in the People's Fund, right? But I've lived one hell of a cowboy life, you know, <laughs> back room to back room. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not all cut out. And also my my family's, my parents were all right, mm -hmm. you know? Like, they were doing decently all right, you know? So I could I could afford not to have a job, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I could afford to go a year and be like a 200 grand a month. You know, we, we can't all do that. Our yeah, circumstance yeah. is different. I do think if getting into a job, and if you're lucky, you get a decent job. Mm -hmm. So I also want to qualify it with the thing I said earlier. My daughter, you have to get money every month. First and foremost, whatever the, whatever the <laughs> cost is. Whatever, <laughs> By any like, means. <laughs> whatever the... Whatever the like, <laughs> 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 I'm not saying that's on record. But <laughs> almost any means necessary. <laughs> Make sure get him out. As long as it's legal. Uh, yeah, as long as it's legal. Let's say that on the podcast. <laughs> Man, I, I, you see, another funny thing about like learning God is I've let go of secular morality. So yeah. legalities and all of that other weird stuff, right? It's not, it's not the be-all and end-all because that's born from secular morality. Like, man, do you know who's the person God loves who says the man after my own heart? Like it's the second highest named person after Jesus in the Bible. It's David, mm -hmm. a murderous, philandering adulterer, right? Like, like that man killed somebody to get his wife. You know, mm -hmm. um, I say this for example, not to say God loves killers. Like, yeah. <laughs> for the example and purpose of explaining that one of the most interesting things to learn about God is that his lack of secular morality, mm -hmm. right? It's like, nah, I've got a purpose and a plan. No, no, my plans were in the end. Equal justice. <laughs> the story, bro. You know? <laughs> it doesn't work like that. Yeah. There are bigger things that need to happen. There are people who got demons that need to be cast out. And sometimes how they end up on your lap is that you end up in jail mm -hmm. because you did X, Y, and Z. You were drinking and driving. Mm -hmm. End up in jail, you got the gift of, not the gift, you got the ability to pray. Mm -hmm. Pray for these people. You know what I mean? When you start seeing the world in that perspective, you're like, oh, fuck, this is a job that he ate all over again. Mm -hmm. I wasn't there when he laid the foundations of the earth, you know? So, but, back to your point, as a man, you need to make money. Um, as a woman, sure. If you're under 30, you find a way to make money. Must laugh. Must laugh. Mm -hmm. You're young. All these views you have about how you're going to take over the world. Yeah, they'll change by the time you're 29. <laughs> they'll change, right? Um, uh, especially if you fall pregnant. Like, your views change completely. Mm -hmm. As a man as well, as soon as you get somebody pregnant, your views change. I was a deep intersectional feminist. When that baby was born, I was like, I'm saying it's mad. Something saying it's mad. Time to go make money. And my, my then girlfriend, all she wanted to do was us to build a family. I'm like, fucking shut up. Like, you need to focus on building a family. <laughs> I need to go make money, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and that, 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 that disagreement in perspectives and worldviews eventually ended up in us not being together. Mm -hmm. um, I'm lucky now. Doesn't that happen like, like more often than not? Where like the guy would be like, yo, I, I'm, you know, I need to get, get this money. And then, you know, the lady would want the, the, she wants help. The cuddly stuff. Yeah, I don't. I wanna. I wanna. I wanna correct both you and I. It's not the cuddly stuff. She wants help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, th the thing she wants is the same problem of why we're having these arguments in the workplace with women. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The thing she wants is actually the same problem. She wants a cake and she eats it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You must be a good provider, and also at the same time be a good present father. Mm -hmm. It's like nah, nah. One must die. <laughs> what is going to suffer? <laughs> what is going to suffer? Th that's usually the case, especially if when when you're trying to be, um, you know, a high net worth person. It, 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 the being present is going to suffer for a couple of years until permanently, not a couple of years, permanently. Like I, I, I don't even want to make any delusions. Like I'm permanently going to be a pretty much absent father, right? I need to have a really good partner by my side mm. who covers those bases pretty solid. By absence, I mean, if they're still up when I get home, 
and then on weekends. Mm. And my job is to remind them what authority is. You know, because mm. you negotiate a normal. Mm. Mm. Like, hey! <laughs> <laughs> and it's done, right? <laughs> Lion has roared. <laughs> And I, I and I and I and I say this and I say this like with 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 with, with, with caution because it's, man, it's tough, man. As being young and navigating the world, and then you have kids, so the thing that you're talking about it happens more often than not. Mm-hmm. I've seen it, like in I've heard women talking about on social media. We should probably get a week off of work for the week we're having a period, and I was like, I can see how your reasoning got there. For being stupid, mm. like you're asking for things, you're asking for things that nobody else is asking for, mm. um, and this is the cake I want to eat it. Nobody asked, you know, like they like to talk about men have been in the workforce for a long time. It's like men, men weren't asking to be in the workforce. It's just it's a burden we carry on with much much better ease. Mm. We don't mind being frustrated because of work. We hate being frustrated because of kids. As a general <laughs> no. <laughs> and because of you. <laughs> oh, um, I love my girl. I'm <laughs> Man, like my kids actually disturb my relationship. <laughs> Me and my girl would be like this awesome. Like we're an awesome couple even with them there. But like, man, these kids. One of my friends always says, fuck them niggas, man. <laughs> <laughs> man, me and my girl have an awesome relationship. Like, yeah. It's so playful, it's so fun, it's so amazing, you know? And it's just that parenting and being an adult gets in the way, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, but yeah, me and her found an understanding. Even every time we try to work together, we quickly realize, what the fuck are we doing? Like, we don't do this, you yeah. know? She loves being a wife. Yeah. In the strictest definition of that term, yeah. historic definition of that term. She likes being a wife. She likes to provide. Man, look at my belly. Like she hey. likes. Hey. Man, man, that woman cooks me three meals a day. Um, she. <laughs> she. I think we're out of time. But yeah, <laughs> I can talk about her all day long. Yeah, yeah. no. Look, we definitely should have a round two, uh, even if it's not anytime soon, because also time constraints are a thing. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for pondering this invite. Appreciate it's a pleasure. Thank you very, very much, me. man. Uh, it's a long time coming. Like how how often how many times do we go back and forth? It's just trying to schedule time. It was a, a two three weeks. I'm in trouble even now. Probably even a month. <laughs> it's a month. I'm in trouble now because I'm late. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate you, brother. I really really do. Uh, you're really one of the people. You know, whenever I need advice, even when I had that other relationship advice with them, yeah, yeah, you, you know. So I've always with I'm the old guys that you just said on this podcast. <laughs> <it's> different. <laughs> So you you always a source of, 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 of good information, man. You and even the the, the, the there was a time we, we uh, I was down enough a few years ago. I was I was going to turn thirty, and I was so bummed out that I didn't make it to the fourth thirty under thirty. Representation stuff, right? Right, and then the way you just laid it down, and I was just like, I. Right, that that's just like I haven't thought about that since that day. So thank you for always being. I've here. never been on any. Sorry to disturb you. Yeah. Ask me. I can't think of an entrepreneur my age who's as good as me. I yeah. say that with all humility. Mm. The numbers don't lie. Mm. Yeah? I've never won an award. I've never been in Mail and Garden and 200 on that 200. I've never been in Forbes 30. I've never been on any of those lists, ever. And then, and then we question like fuck the people that are there also who the fuck are they and what are they hey, yeah, like, like some of them some of them are my friends I can do that but yes. Drake said some Drake said, said something nice you know that I love Drake because mm. um, he's got simplistic beauty I love it deep yeah. <laughs> he said how are we out here winning everything but awards you know yeah. never forget that yeah. like I never forget that I don't know mm. any and I say this loosely the ones I don't know is because they're also doing the same thing I'm doing. Mm. They are killing the game, right? I don't know another entrepreneur at 32 who was doing 150 million a year in business, right? Mm. Never been on any list. I'm not saying this to, 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 to blow my own horn. I'm saying this to say awards in entrepreneurship are as bad as awards in advertising. Yeah. 
because then you know you're selling air. <laughs> Done. Thank you, thanks. I will wrap it up. Leander Chapter, ladies and gentlemen. My good friend. Thanks a lot, bro. Thank you. Mm-hmm. What a session. Oh, that was fun. That was beautiful. Ah, <laughs> <laughs>